What really happened at Mount Sinai? It's really uh, a mystery. And, you know, a mystery is something that, even if it's explained in words, you don't necessarily understand it. And so we read the account in the Torah of what happened at Mount Sinai, uh, the giving of the Ten Commandments, um, thunder and lightning, and um, apparently an earthquake, and uh, one terrific thunderstorm, uh, very, very uh, dramatic special effects, if you will, uh, were going on as God spoke to the entire people of Israel, according to the account in the Torah. Uh, quite a noisy affair um, from what we're able to gather from this description. And there is a branch of the Midrash, the rabbinic commentary in the Torah, that takes off on this theme and even amplifies the amount of um, awe and terror and disruption uh, that was going on because God, uh, according to uh, the traditional theology, is in his heaven and we are on our earth. And while there's a connection between the two, certainly, uh, God is, is far away uh, from human affairs most of the time. And so for God to uh, bend the heavens and, and descend on top of Mount Sinai uh, would be something that would tear the entire universe asunder and uh, would tear uh, the human senses asunder. And so there are marvelous commentaries about all the myriads of angels that came at that time and, and uh, the spectacular physiological effect on the people. They were knocked down, they were knocked dead, in fact, according to, to one account. And the angels had to revive them in order for them to receive the uh, giving of the Torah at Mount Sinai at this time. Um, there is in psychology uh, something called, uh, called synesthesia, where uh, the senses get mixed up and you can smell colors or you can see sounds. Uh, similar kinds of um, pathways, nerve pathways, get mixed up in, in uh, synesthesia. And there's a very pregnant phrase in the description of Mount Sinai. It says, Ve'ha'am ro'im et akolot. The people saw the voices, literally, um, usually translated as they saw the lightning. But uh, kolot, uh, thunder, uh, uh, is more accurate. And, and how were they able to see uh, what is ordinarily only heard? Well, there's a, a hint here that maybe their senses were so overwhelmed and mixed up by this experience that they experienced synesthesia in the giving of the Torah at Mount Sinai. So this is one strand of interpretation of the giving of Torah. Uh, the other strand says uh, something quite different, quite opposite, that when God manifested himself at Mount Sinai, really um, there was total silence, a total settling of, of the entire world. Uh, one of the Midrashim says, not an angel uh, stirred in heaven, uh, not a bird flew on earth, not an ox bellowed in any field. And uh, the whole world stopped to hear as uh, the voice went forth from Mount Sinai. Pre presumably a kol de mama daka, a, a sound of silence went forth. And God said, Anochi Adonai Elohecha, I am the Lord your God. So um, which was it? Was it special effects, or was it the sound of silence? I have to tell you that um, I myself go for the, the silent interpretation. You know, uh, many years ago, I, I toured the Sinai Desert, and uh, we were brought to the place, which is the supposed site of Mount Sinai, and it is a magnificent place, I must tell you. And the standard for tours of the Sinai, and, and at this spot in particular, is to climb Mount Sinai, uh, about 3,000 meters high, as I recall. Um, and the last, I don't know how many feet, we, we did it for about an hour, uh, carved stone steps uh, made by the monks who live at the base of that mountain um, all the way to the summit. And we got there at sunrise, and it was a totally um, unforgettable, awesome sight to see the sunrise from on top of this uh, wonderful setting. Well, you know, that's one possible uh, sighting of the place of Mount Sinai. No one really knows for sure where it is. The uh, modern um, anthropologist, uh, archaeologist, Simcha Yakubovich, um, cites the uh, site of Revelation in a different place. In fact, it's, it's sort of an unspectacular ridge that he, he located, and he has a number of reasons for, for thinking that it's that place that the Torah was given to the people of Israel. Um, I would go more with Simcha Yakubovich on that one because uh, it's so unspectacular, it's so, so ordinary really, this place. And 
it goes along with um, my sense that Revelation was really something quite quiet and silent and subtle. There is uh, a very beautiful interpretation of Rabbi Mendel of Rimanov, one of the great Hasidic masters, who says that really um, the only revelation that was received by anyone at Mount Sinai was the first letter of the first word of the revelation, the first word being Anochi, I am, and the first letter being the letter Aleph, which is a silent letter. In fact, Aleph is the position that the human palate takes in preparation for making a sound. So that there is in this Aleph the potential for all sound, all words, all knowledge, and yet it is a perfectly silent letter. Uh, a beautiful representation of this elusive concept of sound of silence. And according to Mendel of Rimanov, this is the, the, the whole of what people got at Mount Sinai, that sense of the potential for all of knowledge and all of righteousness and all of holiness and all of purity contained in a dramatic experience of silence, something that would settle down their senses and perhaps even, uh, according to that other midrash, everything in the world, everything in the universe stopping for a moment so that eternity the eternity that underlies all could be experienced just for a moment by all of the people of Israel. So I'm wishing everyone a glorious Shavuot. I'm not sure exactly when you're going to be seeing this video. It could be even after Shavuot. But Shavuot, the holiday of revelation of Torah to the Mount, uh, at Mount Sinai to the people of Israel, is coming soon. And however it comes for you, I want to wish you uh, a renewal of Torah, a renewal of knowledge, a renewal of inspiration in your lives so that you can live the way that God and the Torah really intends for us to live on this earth. So wishing you a Chag Shavuot Sameach and a Shabbat Shalom.